So welcome to Campfire Cookout, the cooking show you can take anywhere. I'm here with Fabian Lowe from Feast Like a Sage. Thank you. And he's here to cook us a one pot camp dish. So can I ask, what's your dish and why is it perfect for camping? Okay, so this um, is a Thai inspired rice noodle dish uh, with, and it's flavored with a lot of uh, wonderful aromatic lemons and limes and, and um, and it's a combination of like sours that, that really make it really appetizing. It's very light, so you can have it on a really hot day after a big nice swim in the beach. And it's also very convenient because you can make it in one pot as well. What started your interest in cooking, particularly cooking outdoors? Um, so, well, I got involved in a really cool project. When I moved to North America for a little while, I wanted to experience the festival culture. So there was a little bit of an opening at the time for volunteers working in a, in a kitchen to feed uh, the camp, basically. But then I started to find out, okay, apart from the work, there was a lot of joy having a lot of really, really good wholesome food out in the middle of nowhere in this festival. And, and people were just like, you know, super grateful for the, the work that was done. And, they were inspired by having like such a variety of different options. Where were you at Fire Festival? I think you could have saved them. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was really amazing. And, um, and, and to actually have all those uh, great food, nourishing food, when, when you're out in the middle of nature and it was like, it was a, literally a desert with the most amazing scenery. It was just a memory that, that was just really worth having. Where would you say is your, you know, dream foodie location for travel? Where where inspires you and particularly inspires this dish? There's my there's my um, standard go-to place which I really enjoy going back to is the place where I grew up in Singapore. Now, uh, this dish is inspired in part from that region. Mm. Uh, there's a Thai influence, there's a Malaysian influence, there's a Singaporean influence, but. In that region, it's really an amalgamation of like no less than four cultures hmm. living together. And uh, after some time, after about 100 years or so, um, you get a lot of mixes, like fusions that happen naturally as a result of the local produce. Okay, can you, uh, can you walk us through the steps for your, uh, your noodles, please, Fabian? So we want to have some rice bran oil to start with. So I'm just gonna put it into the wok. Just a nice... That's a healthy amount. Healthy amount. A glug. And the idea of, with the oil is to... You want it to coat the noodles. So most of the flavors will be in the oil. It's gonna uh, really, really dress the entire dish that way. Once the oil's in, and uh, we don't really need it to get smoking anything. You can put in the onion and garlic. Okay. So how long do you need for your... Uh your onions, I see they're just starting to simmer. Yeah, they're starting to simmer. I, I don't go by time, especially not when, when you're camping. Yep. And the reason is because the temperature does vary a lot. You know, uh, today might be a little bit more windy, uh, but other days when it's still, um, yeah, you, you get a faster cooking time. What are you looking for in your onions? Uh, a lot of the, the flavors uh, in, in the onions um, infuse into the oil. The good indicator for that is when I visually look at it, it's become translucent and also a little bit brown. Um, is there a, a story behind this dish or uh, where was the last place you, you cooked this over a camp stove? Now, uh, I've done this on, on, on a smaller scale at the regular kitchens and stuff, but yep. at uh, in the outdoors environment, I did it uh, twice the size of this. It was at a local festival. They just made a huge batch and they just delivered it around like, hey, have some noodles, have some noodles. I like that process because it, at that time, it kind of takes me away from the hustle and bustle of the yeah. festival as well. And it's a bit like a meditation for me. I really enjoy the process. I can imagine it's a good way to make friends and meet people. If, oh, you, yeah. if you've got a bowl of noodles, then or you're handing out food, yeah. then, uh, you know. Oh, actually, funny enough, if I'm just cooking onion and garlic and ginger, <laughs> people just come by you and just go, smell it. something smells good, yes. something smells good. And I, what's it? Oh, just onion and garlic. <laughs> Timing wise, I get a sense that maybe it's a good opportunity to put on the other ingredients too. Yep. So I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and pop this in. So what are you adding? These are, these are the lime leaves, are they? Or? Macrute lime. Macrute yeah. lime. Mm. Not so much flavor, but aroma. Aroma is just gorgeous. So I want to get the same aromas into the oil. Mm. Plan. It's oh, all the, about the oil. Yeah. 
lemongrass, pre-minced and up. Uh, that looks like it's kind of handy if you can mince up your, your lemongrass to take it on the trail. That's going to yeah. be easier to, to back away. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to put in a generous amount of that and then um, mix it in. I am going to open up this Tom Yum paste to give it a little bit more of a boost. Okay. Spoon chef. <laughs> Spoon time. And you can use Tom Yum cubes too, for, you know, if you don't want to use the paste. Cubes are actually a lot more portable for camping. Could you go mm. for any other sort um, of curry paste? You yep. could actually uh, go with, um, you know, green curry even. Green curry will have a completely different character to it. Yep. And it probably works best instead of putting in water later. You put in coconut cream. Slight variation. Okay, there we go. It's good. And now I put in the paste last for the for the base flavors, just because it's likely to burn uh, before everything else gets cooked. So it's take your time on the yeah. on adding the paste. This process here that I'm um, showing yep. requires a bit of patience. It's it's the part that I don't want to rush. You want it to take its time to develop the flavors. Sometimes they talk about having like spices much better overnight. So yep. with this, in this case, it's kind of a similar sort of process where you just want to let it develop flavor. And as you said, sometimes curries are better the next day. It's the kind mm. of thing which would keep. Yeah. Cook lots. You'll have some noodles to look forward to tomorrow. Or... That's right. The other thing about overcooking it is it becomes a mush and that's not very tasty. So you want to make it uh, retain its uh, El Dente kind of like, if yeah. I borrow something from the Italians, El Dente kind of... Uh... So they borrowed the pasta? <laughs> yeah. They, yeah, they took, they took the, the spaghetti. They took the noodles, yeah. You yep. can definitely smell the, uh, the tom yum. Yeah, the smell is gorgeous. Loving the smell. And you this... make a lot of friends cooking this at a festival. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So yeah. the next stage is where I'm going to put in the, the water into here to make a broth. If it's hot, it'll be quite spectacular. Yep. Woo. So it suddenly becomes very soupy. Yeah, it becomes very soupy. So it's a bit like a magic show. like that, yeah. yeah. We've got all the steam. Steam, steam and mirrors. Steam and mirrors. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then I'll put in the tamarind. Now so, tamarind is, um, if you're in a small dairy and, you know, is there anything else that you can use to get the character of tamarind or make sure you camp in with it? It's a little bit of a specialty ingredient, to be honest, um, especially the one that has been pre-pulped. Hmm. It's good stuff. That's a good glug. Yeah, a good glug. Measuring by, yeah. by eye. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's how I cook. <laughs> it's just a more intuitive process. Yeah. And this is just tomato puree, is it? Tomato puree. Another big glug. And save the remainder for pasta or something. <laughs> okay. I will, I would actually add the Smoke paprika now. You know, just add some more smokiness to, yeah, the, uh, to yeah. the outdoor cooking. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> special cover. Okay, we just be um, nice and careful with that. But that would keep the heat within that. Now, while that's going, uh, I am going to hydrate these uh, noodles. The yeah, get some water. All right. And this process doesn't take very long at all. So, all you really want to do is just make it a little bit soft. And um, so, how long do they need in there? Is it just Couple of minutes. Couple of minutes. Yeah. I'll say not longer than five. Uh, otherwise, it'll become quite soft anyway. Yep. Okay, there we go. I just have to manage. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> okay. Let's put in some uh, vegetarian seasoning. It's coming to a boil. So, this, this is the texture that I kind of want, you know? Yep. Like, like springy, but still quite firm. It's definitely not fully. Um, so you're looking for the bounce from your noodles. Yeah. And that's when they're telling you they're done. So I'm just going to pour this out. That is boiling. Here we go. We have the tofu puffs. So adding the tofu. Uh, tofu puffs. And then noodles. Lovely. Yeah. And now, the trick is to make sure everything is nice and even. So I'm just going to turn it around a little bit. 
Look at then, that. And then you'll just sit like that and soak up all that broth, all that wonderful broth. With your Tom Yum soup, is, uh, I think it would look good enough to have as a soup beforehand. But, yeah. Uh, that'll yeah. all disappear in the, yeah. in the tofu and in the noodles. And, yes. You know. Before too late, I'm just going to season the dish properly with um, when salt. You know, salt. It's, salt. it's good to go. When does it say, I'm ready to eat? When there's no more broth. So it's all of that soup has really got to disappear into the noodles. Yes, that's right. I'm going to cover it because now it's nicely going to steam up nicely. So finally, we have uh, the three ingredients. We have the chives. Uh, this is fried shallots. Yep. I buy it like that. It's nice and convenient. And then, of course, the, the lemon. Great. So mm. um, should we check on those noodles? Yes. Uh, let's check on it. I'm going to use my uh, Kung Fu to lift up this lidless. You've got uh, fingers of asbestos there. <laughs> that must be pretty hot. <laughs> yeah. no, no, it's actually quite. It still needs another couple of minutes to go, but it's going to take its own time because there's a lot of you know, mm. heat left in the pot. So what we have is chives. And uh, I, I, I love chives. Um, we don't use it much in a lot of cooking, but my granddad used to grow this at home. And I remember it as a little kid, like, chopping a little bit off his garden and he, you know, that takes me back quite a bit. I've got a special relationship with this uh, vegetable. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So at this stage, uh, it'll be nice to use the heat from the noodles uh, and the heat alone from the dish is good enough to, to steam this up a little bit. I'm gonna... Um, so you're totally covering it with your, yeah. your chives. It's yeah. a nice color. Let's get onto the lemon. Yep. Oh, powerful lemon. All right, so I'm massaging my lemons. And that... Uh, Making it nice and relaxed. Get a bit, yep, relax before you take <laughs> yeah. the hatchet to it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you, lemon. Get your juices out. You, uh, your work is uh, here. There we go. And that's perfect. And following that, I'll just mix it in a little bit. And then finally is to put in the, the fried shallots. I'm going to leave some aside. Oh. In. Lovely. And is that good to, good to eat now, or are you, do you need to leave it to steam the chives a bit longer? It, it is good, good to go. That looks good enough to eat. Should we, uh, should we try some? Yep. Okay. Let's do this. Let me dish it up. Ooh, Have a look steamy, at that. Yeah. It just carried on soaking mm. up the sauce. Yep. It's so a very attractive looking bowl of noodles. Yeah. Great color. Especially with the chives. Mm. There you go. Thank you very much. Oh, Time for a taste test. Mm. Yep. Oh, well, cheers for these. Mm. Looks mm. lovely. Are you happy with the result? Yes, yes. Um. Not too much sauce. It sort of just coats the noodles and flavors mm. them. And I think soaking them really helped. Yeah, for sure. So they're nice and light and fluffy. Um, just like that. Yep. Um, there's no more broth. It's all completely soaked up by the noodles. You do get the um, crude lime, mm -hmm. um, but you just avoid, avoid them. Well, this is a really nice, you know, flavorful and um, quite, a, you know, adaptable dish that mm. um, I can imagine you could camp in or uh, take to a festival, mm. as I can imagine you have. Well, for those who don't know what Burning Man is, it's an experimental city that occurs like for seven days in the middle of the Nevada desert, mm. Black Rock Desert. It is very very isolated very very beautiful but the con and the conditions there are really really harsh too like no one goes there as a spectator yep and and so you're you're going there with the intention of contributing something you know we're obviously told to camp in you know hike in your food and hike out your rubbish mm, yes if you hike into the you know black rock desert there's nothing there you know if you forget it then uh, how far away is the nearest shop wow <laughs> <laughs> it's a few hours so well so the challenge was to, to spend about a couple of weeks in advance in a place outside of, um, of Burning Man uh, to prepare and get all the ingredients and um, set up the menu plan and bring it all yeah. the way to the, to the, to the venue, uh, to Black Rock Desert, set up the kitchen, mm. build the kitchen, and, and then um, get everything working, the water supply, the, the sewage, the, the, um, the, the black water and uh, the rubbish. Yep. And, and so all you're essentially stuff. building a kitchen. Yes, yeah. That's, yeah. you know, camping cookout at, a, at another level. One of the main things about Burning Man and uh, the, the principles that they have is called leave no trace. 
Yep. So whatever you bring in has to be taken out. Uh, you know, not, not even a grain of rice. We have to be extremely careful about yep. it. I remember that uh, there was once that some flour was spilt onto the plier. We actually had to get a vacuum cleaner in to, to vacuum it off. We, we took it seriously. Yep. But the principle behind it is that it's a beautiful place in nature. Whatever we bring in, we have to be responsible for it. Right. It's just it's essentially camping, isn't it? It's camp it's a very cooking, yeah, it's a know, very just on a big scale. Uh, you have to well, take your kitchen with you. Yeah, I think that's glamping at its finest, uh, and and it gets challenging because you're trying to keep up with food hygiene standards, and you can't get <laughs> dust all over your food, uh, especially if you're going to serve it. A nice garnishing of dust. <laughs> yeah, part effort. of the charm of Burning Man is to put yourself in a really really challenging environment to really, really test yourself to see how far you can be pushed. It's, it's part of what we need as in the human psyche and that's why we, we challenge ourselves in, in our jobs, in our work, our family environment. But this is a, one that's a bit more of a testing pot for it. What's the one ingredient or piece of cooking equipment that makes your life easiest that you, know, you couldn't do without? I have to say that would be my walk. Your walk, you wouldn't leave home without it. And is there something more, you know, something you can get a little bit of that character of cooking from a walk but without yes. having to hike in something yes. as impressive as your walk if uh, if you want to deal with the weight then um, there's always a cast iron pen it's worth <laughs> it. <laughs> but you know people might need a challenge and um, that's an awesome challenge well thank you Fabian for uh, your excellent lunch and um, where can people find out more about uh, feast like a sage um, so my website is feastlikeosage.com. I, I do catering for, for smaller groups um, and I also specialize in remote catering so like things like, like on the camping side and somewhere where you don't really expect to have a kitchen. Nice, well thanks a lot Fabian. I'll let you eat up while it's still warm. Thank you very much. Cheers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good job, Fabian.